Good evening, everyone. I'm Daniel Amstutz. I'm the Senior Transportation Planner for the Town of Arlington. And this is the second meeting of the Mystic River Path Connection to the Minuteman Bikeway Feasibility Study. Here I've got Amber Christofferson from the Mystic River Watershed Association and also a couple of folks from Tool Design Group and they'll introduce themselves in a minute. Um, could we go on to the next slide? So I know we've been doing this for a little while, but um, when you enter and uh, everyone's muted by default, please keep yourself muted if you're not speaking so we can avoid any uh, background noise that comes in. You're free to turn on your camera if you would like um, or keep it off if you are speaking during the meeting, your video might be picked up, um, but we're recording it so that other people can watch this later and we'll put it onto the town's website afterwards. We'll, uh, the chat is enabled for basically asking questions of the hosts, um, which we will get to further on about 20 or 30 minutes into the meeting. We'll have lots of time for questions and also comments on what we'll be seeing today. And again, if you need any information about raising your hand, uh, it's the lower part of the screen. If you're calling in by phone, star nine controls mute and unmute and star six is to raise your hand. Um, and I think at this point, Amber, if you want to introduce yourself very briefly and then um, send it over to Stephanie. Sounds great. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Amber Christofferson. I'm the Greenways Director at the Mystic River Watershed Association. We're really uh, thankful that you are giving up part of your evening tonight to join us and share your input. Uh, this is a really important project for us because it is connecting people of all ages and all abilities to some amazing natural resources in the area of the Mystic River, Mystic Lakes, the Alewife Brook Greenway, and Minuteman Bikeway. So we see a lot of potential here. Glad to be starting the process. I'll kick it over to Stephanie, who's our consultant. All right. Thank you. Um, I'm Stephanie Wire, landscape architect with Tool Design and the project manager for this project. I am here tonight with uh, Sneha Adekari from Tool and Lucy Gibson as well. They are both engineers. Um, have quite a lot of information to present tonight. So I'm gonna you know, essentially kind of recap where we've been, what we heard from you in the last meeting and survey, and then give a high level overview of our various concepts, both kind of what's happening in the cross section in the corridor and intersection concepts for, for all of the different intersections in this project. Um, at 8 p.m., we're gonna try to start our question and answer session. We are really gonna focus the first 10, 15 minutes on taking questions only, um, just because you know, my presentation staying high level, we wanna make sure everyone's able, um, while they're able to stay on the meeting, really get some clarification for anything we couldn't cover in the presentation. Um, 8.15, we'll start an open comment and additional question period, and anyone who asked questions earlier on will be able to raise hands again. So with that, um, just want to give some, some brief reminders on what the project's about. This is a feasibility study. So it's a high level planning look um, at establishing an alignment, facility types that fit in the alignment um, for a multi-use path from the Alewife Brook Greenway to the Minuteman Bikeway. So really trying to create you know, this key connection between what are already two established paths. Um, and again, focusing on intersections and creating safety improvements throughout this corridor at those major intersections and, and neighborhood connections. I won't read through this whole slide, um, but these are our, our goals. Um, we presented these in the last meeting. Um, generally, just wanna reiterate some major points, which is that you know, we're really trying to create an accessible route for all users, all abilities, um, create that route recognizing this is part of the walking and biking network between communities, between Arlington, Medford, and Somerville, um, and to your neighborhood streets and, and local park spaces. Safety and comfort are, of course, a priority. Um, but we also really want to recognize that this is a place for people to be. And as they move along Lower Mystic Lake, Mystic River, we really want people to have a great experience um, and really be drawn to these resources. Just a little um, tidbit on where we are in the progress of this project. Um, you know, we're kind of a little over halfway through here at the end of March. 
Um, we have delivered an existing conditions assessment memo to the town. Um, they'll be posting that online shortly. Um, right now, you know, we're having this meeting to, to go over our draft alternatives, intersection placemaking concepts with you. We'll take the feedback from the meeting um, tonight and incorporate that over the next two months into refining more of our concepts um, into a whole preferred alternative, um, develop maintenance recommendations. We have some meetings um, with stakeholders coming up. We've already just had a, a focus group meeting recently and a stakeholder group meeting um, earlier this month. Um, and then we're gonna be wrapping that all into a feasibility study report. That's the final deliverable. It'll include cost estimates or detailed information on you know, how to implement this project and carry it to the next stage. So with that, I wanna briefly touch on what we heard in the last public meeting and survey. Um, this is covered in detail in that existing conditions memo. So all of that information, the full survey results will be made available. This has to be a short presentation, so I'm just gonna stay really brief. Um, you know, public meeting, we had about 110 people. The survey, we had at 520 completed responses. And of those, over half were from Arlington. Um, we did get a, a good proportion, 18% from Medford. And then other that we listed here, they primarily included Cambridge, Somerville, and Winchester, but there were several people from a number of different communities um, who responded. So it really shows how much of a regional um, yeah, value this trail can provide. Um, I'm going to skip a lot of the questions that were part of the survey, but just some you know, key points are we asked people what are their major priorities. There were a number of different things you could have responded to here or write in your own answer, um, but really the, the most important and most frequently rated as most important were safe crossings and slow vehicle speeds. Um, and then those connections between Arlington and Medford, particularly over bridges. Key safety concerns, far and away, we heard about the rotaries and the lack of safe crossings there. All intersections were mentioned multiple times. Um, a number of people mentioned along Summer Street, along the parkway as it heads down to the lake um, and along the lake. That space being constrained as it is, um, you know, is really uncomfortable to use. So a number of people commented on the lack of a, a usable shoulder for biking there. Um, and then many people commented on poor sidewalk and roadway pavement conditions. Um, a few key takeaways, um, again, reiterating the need for connectivity with Medford surrounding paths and, and the park spaces that are off to the side and, and on the other side in Medford. Um, you know, a number of you really prioritized recognizing users of all ages and abilities, including different types of cyclists in the design. Um, you know, there's, there's only so much we can do at a high level project like this, but our recommendations will be made to kind of carry forward into next stages and expand on those themes um, for, for different types of cyclists. Um, but hopefully some of what we've been thinking about will come through tonight and recognizing all users. Um, a lot of you, called for separation between cyclists and pedestrians. There were both a lot of pedestrians who really wanted their own space and some commuting cyclists who really wanted to maintain a, a faster space to move. So we thought about that. Um, and then finally, what you won't see tonight is a connection through Buzzle Field. Um, we heard from several people in both the breakout groups we had in the last meeting and in the public survey that Buzzle Field wasn't a great connection just due to all of the uses there, due to game days. Um, we also recognized in our own assessment that really Buzzle Field is gonna need a master plan to kind of reconfigure that space to make a path work. So our concept deals with getting people along Summer Street and through the Mill Street intersection down to the Minuteman bikeway. So those were just some key takeaways. Again, a lot of detail and many of you provided some really excellent ideas and, and you know, kind of minute things to think about that are really important. Um, so you know, we did go through comments in detail and um, have really tried to pull those into the design even if I don't describe it tonight. So we wanna go through an overview of our concepts kind of starting from a cross-section basis. Um, so you're looking at the whole corridor from, this is the Summer Street and Mill Street intersection on the left and the west, 
and the Minuteman Bikeway um, all the way down along the Mystic River um, to Alewife Brook Greenway on the right. Um, throughout the corridor, we proposed one primary shared use path. Um, that's the bright green line, or greenish yellow. Um, where we have space, we've proposed some accessory paths. And one of those is a bike lane. We're currently proposing it as a two-way bike lane. Um, this would start south of the rotaries. Um, you know, like I mentioned earlier, the constrained space on Summer Street and along to the lake um, really doesn't allow for good incorporation of bike lanes. Um, but we can do it south of the rotaries, and I will give more detail on these. Um, we also have proposed some separate areas, we see with the orange lines, um, for pedestrian only paths. So places to split off of the primary shared use path, um, also down here at the confluence with the Alewife Brook. Um, and finally, I'm not going to spend much time talking about them tonight, but um, you know, we, we heard from people within the meeting and the survey about needing to either strengthen existing connections um, and making them safer, making them more visible or handling um, various erosion issues um, between neighborhoods here um, and creating some new neighborhood connections. So we are thinking about those. Um, and I will present one concept that we're thinking about. So I talked about a primary path. I talked about pedestrian only paths and two-way bike lane. It, all three of those can work in um, those three limited areas. Otherwise, the primary shared use path is what we're saying is it's working throughout. Um, the primary shared use path, these, these two cross sections you see here are part of the same design. They are not two different proposals. We're showing a wide cross section, basically where the space is the widest, how this would look and then constrained cross sections. So essentially we're looking you know, wide along the river, constrained along Lower Mystic Lake at the bottom. And this primary shared use path, we're proposing to be asphalt throughout um, from start to finish and with some changes in width. Um, again, we, we wanna recognize that the need to make this path accessible for everyone. We also wanna slow speeds um, so along the river where we have space to kind of split out our paths, um, one thing we've done is propose a 10, 10 foot wide shared use path, something that's actually a little narrower so that we can get some soft stone dust shoulders on either side um, where we can create the space for the stone dust pedestrian paths, proposing that in as well. And those are generally proposed to be closer to the river. Um, in the roadway, we're Proposing a two-way bike lane, we've asked, um, we have a, a second public survey um, that we'll talk about, um, but we also wanna hear from you tonight about your preference between two-way bike lane, which we're proposing on the river side of the parkway, or just one-way bike lanes on either side of the road. We propose two-way bike lanes um, just for having shared space so people can ride fast, but also ride together as a group. Um, and because there is a hill along Mystic Valley Parkway, just south of the rotaries, that's, you know, give people a little bit more climbing space. We avoid some of the conflict with driveways and intersections. Um, but looking to hear more about that. With the, the shared use path, you know, we propose to keep it a little narrower through here to be able to accommodate shoulders. Um, asphalt is going to help us a bit with some of the maintenance issues that exist now with the stone dust and earth paths that are that are there today. Um, those wash out. There's a lot of problems in winter. Um, as we go more toward the constrained area, you know that is already a narrow asphalt path, and we're we're basically proposing to widen it. Um, in all cases, moving the curb um, just out into the roadway away from the river and the path could really be between 12 and 14 foot wide. Again, there's not enough space for bike lanes in this section, um, but just trying to get as wide of a path as we can and as wide as a buffer as we can. And this buffer can also range between six feet at a minimum, 14 feet as a maximum. Um, I will just say there there is some finalization to be done in our conversations with the state, with other stakeholders. So the widths that I'm talking about now may, may still change a bit, um, but generally 
this is our proposal and what we're taking into our conversations with the stakeholders and what they've already seen. Um, those are the cross sections that are a part of the same concept. For Summer Street, this works a little bit differently. This is a unique space and we've proposed two different concepts that we would like to hear from you on. Um, these are also asked about in the survey. Um, Summer Street, you know, right now is wide road that fills on both the north and south sides during game days with parking. And we're showing two different cross sections. One that takes advantage of, of the kind of space you can get if you were to remove parking along Buzzle Field and on both sides of the road. Um, so we're talking during game days, um, just two travel lanes throughout. They would be the typical width that travel lanes um, are often aiming for. Um, create as wide of a path as we can and we're able to get a little bit wider of a buffer to create a bit more opportunity for some landscape space. Um, and maybe we are able to give it a little bit more of a park feel. Um, the other alternative that we're showing down below is if we're keeping the parking on the south side or on the park side, the field side. Um, this is a constrained cross section, but it is a, a functional one. Um, these are cross sections that exist elsewhere, including on Mass Ave in Boston. Um, but you know, this is as narrow as parking would go. Um, your path gets a little bit narrower. Sorry for all the pop-up boxes. I'm trying to move my mouse less. Um, but your buffer is essentially, um, you know, it's essentially just a hardscape buffer is just going to be functional to try to prevent, you know, give enough space to keep people from getting doored when they're in the path. For both of these cross sections, um, we are proposing and we discussed with our stakeholders moving the existing utility poles. Um, you know, right now, if you walk along Summer Street, the sidewalk is very narrow with those utility poles. Um, and so it's everybody just kind of agreed that really we're going to get the best design um, and not obstruct the path, not create any accessibility issues by just going ahead and investing and moving those utility poles. So that is the long term vision for Summer Street with two different concepts we want to hear about parking or no. Um, so this brings us to intersections. I'm gonna go through each one. There are a lot of different things that went into these intersection designs, but I'm just gonna hit on some major points and can clarify things if you have questions. Um, starting at Mill Street and Summer Street, the image north is, is to the right of this image. So Summer Street's coming in from the west here. Um, the big the big points here are that we've removed all the medians around this intersection and the right turn lanes to really tighten up the intersection, um, shorten the various crossings around the intersection, and really slow vehicles down on these turns. Um, with Summer Street on the west side, we've proposed as part of a long-term vision um, carrying bike lanes through, so really creating more kind of a a gateway with this intersection into the path connection. Um, and then finally, you know, we've proposed with the tightening of the intersection, more of a protected intersection for cyclists. So there would be raised curb on each of these corners. So by taking out all those medians, we really get a generous amount of space and are able to create a comfortable path and a comfortable intersection to transition around to get down to the Minuteman bike lane. Moving east along Summer Street, this is the one neighborhood connection concept I'm gonna show tonight. Um, generally, these ideas would kind of carry along to the other neighborhood connections across the parkway. Um, but for we're at Summer Street and Victoria Road. Victoria Road has a crossing existing today on the east side. We are proposing to move that crossing to the west side. Um, we understand this is, you know, this is also something that's been discussed by the Town Transportation Advisory Committee. Um, that's really, you know, doing some good things by lining up the crossing with the entry to Buzzell Field. It also places the crossing more on the crest of this curve and kind of increases the visibility for, for drivers to see people who are in that crossing. Um, and generally, we've proposed advanced warning signage and are, are thinking probably a, a rectangular rapid flashing beacon, so this bright yellow signs with 
blinking lights um, or RFBs, those um, likely work well here um, too. And in other concepts, generally, I'm not going to spend time getting down to the details on signage, um, but signage and pavement markings can really help increase visibility throughout any of these concepts. Going further east to the Summer Street, Mystic Street, Mystic Valley Parkway intersection. Um, you might see here the, the key point is incorporating this diagonal crossing, which is really meeting the desire line for the path as it comes in on the south side of Summer Street um, and then transitions over here to the north side of the Mystic Valley Parkway and then it stays on the north side of the parkway. Um, to do this, um, you know, we have removed the right channelized turn lane or the slip lane on Summer Street and expanded out this curb. You know, the design within the curb is, is to be determined, um, but really this allows us to accommodate all kinds of crossing space. Um, we've worked bike lanes into this intersection as well on Mystic Street. Um, and with this diagonal crossing, Right now, this, this fits the way we have modeled it within the, the total existing signal cycle length for this intersection. This crossing works, but essentially what we're doing is we're, where you have a really short, um, there's a, a dedicated phase or exclusive phase for pedestrians to cross now. It's very short today. We're proposing to lengthen that out. And essentially, cars will wait longer, um, but the, the total signal cycle length would be the same. Um, and the, the other big benefit to this crossing, um, besides following this desire line, is really preventing some conflict with the gas station. This is a very hard space to work around. There's not a lot of um, you know, sidewalk space to work with to create any kind of queuing if we had people go on two legs. Um, so going down to Medford Street, High Street, um, the rotaries today were, you know, trying to turn into modern roundabouts um, with crossings incorporated throughout and the paths on both sides. You can see that we've incorporated crossings on both sides of the river um, to really meet the desire lines for the existing paths. Um, this bridge is 60 feet today, curb to curb, um, with eight foot sidewalk behind that. Um, so that gives us so much space to work with. We've, we're not able to really build anything out on the bridge without reconstructing the bridge. So instead we've proposed two two-way bike lanes on either side to kind of support whatever loop someone might be making. Um, in general, we have formalized these rotaries into roundabouts and really you know, tightened up all of the geometry so that vehicles do have to move slowly through. Um, we propose truck aprons for you know, larger vehicles on Route 60. Um, so they will be able to, to get through in more of a straight movement. This doesn't prevent their movement. And finally, I'll just say that um, you can kind of see that the crossings are set back from the rotaries. And you know, one reason we do this is to make sure that any vehicle that's approaching they're not sitting on top of these crossings and ignoring who might be within the crossings as they're trying to nose in to the roundabout. Um, finally, we're headed all the way down to River Street or the Harvard Avenue Bridge. The big thing we've done here, currently the, the informal pedestrian path is up by the bridge. It's more of a mid-block crossing. It's about 90 feet off of the intersection. We have pulled that pedestrian path down and, and made it part of the whole primary shared use path and incorporated a, a wide crossing here that takes into, takes into it both the path and all of this um, existing sidewalk area and the movements people are making there. We've proposed, um, you know, as follows kind of plans set out by both Arlington and Medford bike lanes on either side of the intersection. Um, you can see the two-way bike lane coming through east to west. Um, and I think just kind of want to note that the gas station on the southeast corner, we would be closing this driveway to accommodate this. So those are the really big points um, to, to cover in the intersections. Um, 
you know, lastly, I talked about really creating an experience. Um, we've thought about some just kind of big ideas in terms of placemaking. Of course, you already have benches out there today. Some people have mentioned wayfinding. We know that's a priority, um, but that's kind of something that will be part of, of recommendations. Um, these are really just kind of big place types that we want to think about and get feedback on. One is waysides, and you can see them starred here on our different connections to the Minuteman and Alloy Brook Greenway, also in the middle south of the rotaries. Uh, wayside would essentially be kind of a small gathering space and orientation area that includes a map kiosk, interpretive signage, seating, um, bike racks, bike repair stations was something that people had suggested that could be incorporated. So they're good places for people to kind of stop um, along the trail. Scenic overlooks, we're showing four locations, one up kind of close to the culvert, Mill Brook under the lake, one at Hayes Street, um, and then one west of the Harvard Ave Bridge, one at the confluence of Mystic River with Alewife Brook. Um, we're showing four locations. Would four overlooks definitely be built? That's you know to be determined. Um, but we're looking to get input on those locations. Generally, when we talk about overlooks, you just look at the picture on the bottom here. We're talking about small wooden construction, so nothing, nothing too outlandish. Um, and then nature opportunity areas. This is you can see these here. Um, actually, I'll go to the the next slide. We've proposed these. Um, north of the rotaries on the curve where there's a big wide open space, or you can maybe just see the crossing at Palmer Street here and essentially the space that's just across from that crossing, um, or again near the Alewife Brook Greenway um, connection. Those opportunity areas we're talking about for things like native planting, rain gardens, butterfly gardens. Um, apparently, some people have suggested orchard planting. Um, interested to get more ideas on what those could incorporate and the potential locations for those, but they're a good opportunity for you know, kind of preserving and enhancing um, the habitat and ecosystem along the, the path. So with that, that's all of the concepts. Um, you know, next steps are just what I mentioned before, we're headed into a more refined stage of design once we have um, your feedback tonight still at a high level. Um, we'll be working toward various recommendations and cost estimates and really trying to package all of this together. Um, we'll present a final report to you in June. Everything I presented is in a second and last public survey, um, which I think Sneha will be adding the link in the chat. Um, so if you could please, uh, you know, hop into the survey and give us your opinions. Um, that would be great. Um, we are now gonna go to, somehow I will eventually prevent my screen from going yellow. I not figured this out yet, how to get it to stay. Um, we're now gonna go to the question and answer session. Um, really wanna reiterate, we, we wanna stick with questions at this time. We absolutely will take comments. Um, and anybody who asks a question now, you're gonna be able to raise your hand in the comment period later if you have general comments. We really just wanna be able to clarify information now um, you know, while everybody's still here. So with that, I'm gonna leave the slideshow up in case I need to, to go back to any slides. Um, but we will be, if, if people wanna ask questions in the chat, they can, you're also welcome to raise your digital hand, which again, you do by going to the bottom of your screen. Um, yep, under reactions, where there's a little yeah. space. Yeah. There we go. The reactions is not showing on my screen. So it's yeah. like, that's a word. As a presenter, I don't see it. Um, hey, Stephanie, I've got some questions through the chat that came in while you were talking. Um, I can briefly go over those if well, that works to start that way. Yeah, let's sure. do that and then we'll go to, I see John has his hand up. He'll go after yeah. you, Daniel. So yeah, quickly, I, I have answered everybody, um, the three or four people who've asked some questions to start with, but I'll um, just read them out and briefly maybe add a little bit. 
Uh, Jennifer asked about the um, parking on Summer Street. Will you propose what other options people have for parking or will that just be a necessary compromise? And so basically that is to be determined. I think the, if you were to just sort of say remove parking from Summer Street, people would end up parking into the neighborhoods. There are some side streets such as Victoria Road, Johnson Road that do sometimes get parked up. I actually used to live very close to there. Um, understanding that that may be a, you know, a hardship for the neighborhood residents if that were to happen. It's the sort of thing that would still need to be determined through like another uh, parking study or further as, as this project moves along. Um, I think we're trying to get through here some feedback on that, whether or not that's sort of worth uh, going that route or whether, you know, still retaining parking on uh, Summer Street is is useful and, and certainly a conversation we need to have with the Park, uh, Parks and Recreation Commission and the Recreation Department here at the town. Um, let's see, a couple of other questions. Oops. Let's see. Um, a couple from Ellen about whether the sidewalks would be replaced. The answer is yes, basically all these areas where there's existing sidewalks would be replaced through this project to build out the trail. Uh, I will just add that um, I believe the Public Works Department in Arlington is planning to do some sidewalk replacement on Summer Street and um, you know, we'll need to work with them on seeing how we can coordinate some of this. I don't think they could do, you know, they couldn't sort of move curbs and utilities at the same time, but uh, they may be making some sidewalk repairs in the near future. Um, and then I think one other question. Oh, another question about the trail surface. I think Stephanie, you mentioned it was gonna be asphalt. I think that's that's through throughout the entire project except for the uh, stone dust pedestrian path. And, but that would be asphalt along the lake and also along Summer Street, is that right? Correct. So this entire green line would be asphalt. Okay. And then the last question from Sarah was about the two-way bike lanes. Will they have a physical barrier between them and the car lanes along uh, Mystic Valley Parkway? So the answer is yes, that's the idea. And, but that's still to be determined with the Department of Conservation and Recreation, which would actually have to maintain that barrier. Um, uh, so that, that would need to be figured out during the design process as well. And so that's, those are the ones that came in while you were presenting. I seem to have some um, just direct message questions as well. Um, one is how do you anticipate the increased paved areas will impact water quality and erosion from stormwater runoff? Um, we think that the paved path is gonna help prevent some erosion. We do think this is gonna need, you know, plenty of consideration and planning um, and conversations with the Conservation Commission going forward um, to, to mitigate some of, you know, if we are paving, what do we need to do um, to mitigate the impacts of that from a flood perspective? Um, I think from a, from a water quality perspective, I don't really perceive major impacts there, but I won't pretend to speak to that. Um, I think one, one opportunity that we have is in those nature um, opportunity areas and generally just as design would go forward, more thought can be given to how the paths um, kind of interact with you know, planting along the bank. Generally, we're trying to peel those paths somewhat away from the banks and particularly in the constrained section, if we can create a little bit more space at the top of the bank so that more planting could happen and that could help mitigate some pollutants. Um, the, the last, the last, or there's two more direct messages to me. If people could direct their chats um, to the general chat room, be helpful as I'm actually not seeing a oh, lot okay. of other messages. Um, Sorry, I, I changed it so that people can only chat to us, but I think they're just going to every, <laughs> I think it may be going to just one of us at a time. Um, okay, yeah, because I couldn't see, couldn't see yeah. yours, Dan. Sorry about um, that. So how about we go to um, John who's been waiting 
to speak. Yep. Um, maybe maybe go to the people that are waiting to speak live, and then we can go back to the questions uh, that are in the chats. Sure. And again, just want to take questions from from people who are speaking as well. Go ahead, John. Thanks, Stephanie. This is all really, really inspiring and great and exciting. Um, and I'll, I'll reserve sort of comments and ideas for later. Uh, my, my question has to do with uh, Mystic, in front of the police station, the Mystic uh, Summer intersection. Um, and the question really has to do with, with any sort of work that was maybe looked at in comparison with the uh, intersection in the center of town. Uh, where the where the bike path crosses um, Mass Ave and Route 60, uh, Pleasant, I guess it is. Um, so so just kind of looking at those two and and kind of discussing sort of like uh, traffic patterns uh, eastbound on Summer going southbound on Mystic and and kind of just why the decision to do the the diagonal as opposed to something like what exists in the center of town? So two big things on the diagonal um, were you know, preventing conflict with this gas station, just because there's not a great place to have, say, cyclists to queue out in the roadway. Um, with how this gas station is configured, and there is an existing gas station entry here, um, you know, so that was that was a big one. Another one is really just providing that direct line from corner to corner um, with that exclusive phase. So they go hand in hand, having that dedicated signal phase. Um, Dan, is there like a, a history to the consideration at the other intersection, um, and it's a different using a configuration? Um, it was a bit before my time. I think that project actually started design around 2010, 2012 or so. Um, so it took a number of years before it, uh, the Mystic, uh, Mystic Mass Ave, Pleasant Street. So I have more recently been looking at some of the old uh, concepts for that project. I believe a direct diagonal crossing of Mass Ave from like one end of the bikeway to the corner with the Cambridge Savings Bank was considered, or as one of the potential concepts, I would say, if I had to guess, I can only sort of speculate, uh, since I don't know as much about the history, was probably that in order to provide that, you'd had, you do have to provide like an exclusive pedestrian phase or, or bike phase, you could say. And I think for Mass Ave, Mystic Pleasant, it was probably um, too great of a delay for either people wanting to cross from the bikeway or drivers and people along the street trying to cross, um, have that exclusive pedestrian signal, there'd be a lot of delay for everybody. So they've made it sort of concurrent so that you can cross, you know, when, when people are going east or westbound or, or the other way. Um, that's, again, that's my speculation as to why that was sort of chosen that way. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I think that a lot of the concepts that were shown tonight, I think, um, you know, really, they open up a lot of questions. Um, and, uh, but they're in the right, you know, in the right path. So I'll, I'll let other people ask. Thanks. Thanks, John. We'll go to Beth next. Thank you. And, um, Special thanks for having evaluated and giving consideration to the current use of Buzzle Field. Many of us appreciate that. My question is, are you prioritizing, and I hope you are prioritizing, preservation of mature trees uh, in the project, particularly along uh, the river and that green existing green space there on both sides of the road? Um, but really everywhere, that they're just so essential to the community and community health. Um, I'm um, concerned uh, and curious about the areas that you showed along um, the Mystic River when you showed the cross cuts, how you fit all the paths on what is essentially sloped area. <laughs> curious. 
um, as to how you do that. If you can show the. Um, and you're talking, you're talking. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, this is like, um, Stephanie, this is showing like the absolute widest cross section where there isn't as much grade separation, right? That's, well, the right. lower one is that the that's along this the curve of Mystic Lake on Summer Street is that or Mystic Valley Parkway is that what that is? The lower one. Yeah. Yeah. So this this would basically be right here. Okay. Um, we actually right. have about ten different cross sections, but can only show so many in this meeting. Um, okay. And so the, go ahead. Thank you. So along the lower Mr. Lake, lower Mystic Lake, that curve right there for the nature perspective rather than overviews i'd suggest a boardwalk along at the water level if you can do it you know you have obviously you have the bike uh and path at the top for uh bikers and walkers but if a boardwalk could be considered at the lake level that would be terrific then if you can go back to the cross section um along the mystic river the upper one yeah i'm just wondering how you fit all that space um, you have the road on the right, the two-way bike lane and everything. And then on the left there, you show that level green space going to the level bike path on the left, that two-foot um, crushed stone path, really like the crushed stone, and then the bike path. So I, I've, I've walked this along the Mystic Valley Parkway, along the river um, from Park Street up to um, uh, that intersection by the gas station. And it's not flat, <laughs> it's slanted. Oh yeah, um, yeah. So some of those other cross sections that we're not showing, you know, the hill south of the rotaries here. Um, in this case, you can see there's no pedestrian path. This is where the hill is located. The pedestrian path is just the orange line. Okay. So okay. That's, gotcha. that's really, you know, the, we're just kind of using this cross section to really talk about where we have that much space. We can incorporate this separate path yeah, through through along this hill. I mean, it's a much more narrow area, so you're only going to get the the shared use path. Okay, so I'm sorry with asking all my questions. I didn't hear. Are you prioritizing uh, preservation of trees? We are. Um, that is that is a that's the, one of the goals. I did not mention at the bottom here preserving tree canopy. I can show you in the just from a basic level. In our concepts, um, you know, we're even kind of thinking about path configuration around some of those existing trees in some of these concepts. Um, we'll just be making recommendations um, for avoiding those. Um, also dealing with some of the slopes that are off to the side. So yes, generally these, these path configurations are looking to preserve existing trees. And I'm also just going to remind people. folks, I'm trying to keep us moving. Um, if you could okay. just ask clarifying questions right now, rather than getting into more comments, um, that would be useful, I think. But those Thank are you. some really good ideas and appreciate your thoughts. Um, this is Dan. How about we go to David and then Thomas, and then I have like 20 questions in my uh, chat. So, and then, so we see if we can get through some of those. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Hi, go ahead. Um, thanks for the presentation. Uh, this was really great. Um, actually, um, I had not uh, paid attention to this project, uh, but it's good that I stumbled across it. It was fantastic uh, work. Uh, my question was, um, and that goes back to many years, um, trying to get the lighting on Mystic Valley Parkway between the lake and you know street lighting uh, repaired. Uh, I submitted that a couple of times. Uh, because it's pitch black dark in that area between um, the gas station, the Gulf gas station up there, and um, and there there are light posts, um, and you know all the way yeah down there. The light posts um, they've been going out over the last couple of years. So I live uh, pretty close to the Lower Mystic Lake over the last uh, I would say 10, 15 years, and DCR and the town of Arlington um, have never been interested. So I'm just wondering how does lighting uh, or street lighting um, um, you know, have, have you looked at that? Uh, it's a completely pitch black area down there. 
Well, I can tell you in the in the cross sections, you know, it's a little hard to see, I imagine, but we we have kept street street lighting in that area, as per whether the um, they would have to move outward with the buffer, but um, generally proposed to keep it. As for lighting going out, that you know, that's outside the scope of this project. So. <laughs> And then the other question I had is the, the connections to the neighborhood, uh, um, you know, again, very close to the lake, you have it uh, as red dotted lines. Um, not this one, but the next one up towards exactly those two, probably connecting to Davis, Av, and Kimball. Um, they're already, uh, you know, being used uh, uh, because nobody wants to go, obviously, through the uh, the, the tricky intersection right now next to the gas station. So I'm wondering what the design looks like um, that you had in, in, in mind. It's a pretty uh, steep, I would say 10, 15 uh, feet um, elevation gain between uh, Mystic Valley Parkway. So I bike there quite regularly mm -hmm. and the uh, Davis and Mystic Bank. Um, what's the design that you had in mind for that? Well, I'll admit this one, these connections are probably the the least thought out since we've kind of focused more on getting people on the connections across the road. Um, but you know, we have seen those those paths erode. We know that debris from those paths go down into the path. So I think we're we're trying to consider how can we prevent that. Um, as for particular proposals, frankly, we have to give it more thought. Um, but I think that's something that we can definitely flesh out and for the next stage. We know those are a priority. Uh, again, I think they connect well to Route 3. Again, a lot of people you know, bike up Route 3 and then around the Upper Mystic Lake. Uh, so that's quite a popular bike route. So connecting pretty much the uh, Mystic Valley Parkway and not having to go through the more tricky intersection. I mean, hopefully that intersection is not going to be as tricky going forward. Uh, as it is right now, um, but uh, a lot of people I've seen uh, trying to make that uh, connection to Route 3 and then Upper um, Upper Mystic Lake um, pretty much route um, through those uh, two connectors, Kimball and um, um, Davis slash Mystic Bank. Thank you. Thomas, we'll go to you. Yeah, hi, I'm, I'm a cyclist also. I live... Uh, up um, Mystic Street a, a few blocks. And my primary use of biking in this area is actually to get from my house down to the Minuteman path heading west. So I'll typically come down uh, uh, Edge Hill Road, is that the name of it? Or Brookdale, mm -hmm. pick up uh, Summer Street and go down to the Mill Street intersection. So with your path on the far side of Summer Street when approaching from the north, is, is there easy access at those intersections to get up onto the path to continue over to Mill Street? Or would I simply be merging with automobile traffic to get to the Mill Street intersection? It's actually, it's a great point in terms of Brookdale and Edge Hill Road, which you can't really see in this image, um, how those would access. Um, right now we've kind of, funneled the access through Victoria Road, but I think what would be possible is, you know, making cuts essentially that allow people to slope up onto the path um, at any of these roads. I think we need to give further consideration to whether we'd actually have an official crossing at these. Um, but yes, any of these could be made accessible. And unfortunately, I don't have an example of it, but we've done it elsewhere by you know, creating a slope that allows you to bike up onto the path um, from an intersection. And, and Stephanie, I'll just add, um, I, as I, I think I mentioned before, I, I lived very close to here and, and would frequently see people going the, the Victoria Road is one way going towards Mystic Street from Summer Street. Um, but all the time we'd see people going the wrong way on Victoria Road to go because that was the best access, easiest access to get through Russell Field and to get to the Minuteman. Um, Victoria Road is very wide. It's a very sort of strange street. It's, uh, you know, it's probably like 25 or 30 feet wide going one way. Um, so, you know, potentially I could see some way of um, making a better access point through the Victoria Road crossing, um, 
you know, by allowing people to go the other way, a safe way for people to go the other way in Victoria Road because it is the most direct access. Um, but yeah, Brookdale and, and Edge Hill are not, um, certainly right now are not very easy to actually get to the bike ray from there other than um, riding on the road. Yeah, that would make sense to put a, a two-way bike lane on, on Victoria perhaps. Uh, just, just another comment, uh, sometimes when I'm biking in, in Medford and I wanna get to my house, I, I, very, I do not take Mystic Valley Parkway. What I do is go down uh, Medford Street and uh, cut through the cemetery to avoid traffic on Mystic Valley Parkway and to, to avoid a, a turn at the, uh, at the Mystic Valley Parkway and Mystic Street intersection. Thank you. Um, just gonna let people know we are you know, in the open comment and question period at this point. I do wanna go back, let's say to, to Dan's chat. Amber, are you getting chats? You? Not really. Oh, we're okay. special. Um, <laughs> I, have a, I have a few questions okay. and, and comments that came into mind, but Dan, let's take yours first because I'm sure you have some older ones. I have some older ones and then we'll, we'll yeah. go back to raised hands after the chat. Yeah, since uh, people asked some like 20 minutes ago, so I want to see if we can get through those uh, somewhat quickly. Um, Kathleen asks, is the gas station entrance on the corner proposed to remain at Mystic and Summer? Uh, the answer is yes, but I think it would be narrowed significantly is, is the idea. Is, is that right, Stephanie? Yes, right now it's 27 feet wide and it's one way in. So we would propose to narrow that. It would be very complicated. We think, um, we've not had a conversation with the gas station, but the way their pumps are organized probably be quite complicated to actually close this driveway. Thank you. Uh, let's see, Patrick asks, um, or says the like stone tust and paved configuration is interesting. Is there a cost savings associated in terms of constructions and, construction and or maintenance? Do you know the answer to that? <laughs> I, no, honestly, no. Well, I, maintenance, it's quite different between the two, right? Yeah, I mean, maintenance, we'd expect the asphalt path to generally be, be cheaper. Um, yeah. I would say stone dust is not like a, it's not a cheap material necessarily. So it's not, it's not gonna be a massive cost savings, but it would potentially be cheaper to install, certainly not to maintain, it would need a lot more regular maintenance than asphalt. Thank you. Uh, okay, Gina asks a couple of questions. One is about the stakeholders and the focus groups. So we, as part of this project, we have a project team made up of representatives and staff from the Department of Conservation and Recreation, which owns the most Mystic River Reservation and the Mystic Valley Parkway, uh, Massachusetts Department of Transportation, which owns the actually the bridges that go over the Mystic River and um, the Lawrence and Lillian Solomon Foundation, which provided funding for this project as well. Um, the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, uh, and of course the town and um, Mystic River Watershed Association. The focus group, which took place last week, included folks from our Transportation Advisory Committee in, in Arlington, the Bike Advisory Committee, um, you know, residents from Arlington who live, you know, East Arlington near the area and also residents of Medford. Uh, I think some folks represent like the Complete Streets Committee in Medford and the Walk Medford. Um, so those are a few of the folks that, oh, and also from uh, our environmental planner representing the Conservation Commission. So that was a focus group from, from last week. And then there, she also asked a question about the guardrail, um, about why it's located on the lakeside and not between the path and cars. I don't know if I can fully explain that. Um, you know, part of that, that's why I think that's a sort of traffic engineering purpose for that so that cars do not fly off the road into the lake. Um, but as part of this, we are actually looking at and talking to DCR about whether or not there should be a guardrail in between the path and the road. And they actually, they have a whole kind of 
their own requirements and warrant process for determining whether that is necessary or not. So they'll take into account the width of the road, the distance from people on the path, the speed of the road. Um, so that that is an ongoing conversation, figuring out those barriers um, mm -hmm. and whether there should be one between the path and the roadway. We'll just also say, you know, the buffer between the path and the roadway can be up to 14 feet wide. So in some cases, it just may not be necessary due to the width of the buffer. Six feet is kind of the minimum buffer width and might be a good idea in that case. Thank you. One thing I want to add uh, to what yep. Daniel said too, just regarding the focus group is that it was the same content that's being presented tonight. So it, it isn't anything that was like different. Um, so. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. So moving on, Sarah says, what's the level of involvement from the cities of Medford and Somerville? So actually the project team, I forgot to mention this is the city of Medford and their uh, transportation staff have been coming to those meetings and involved and is uh, aware of all this and is very excited about it. And then also the focus group I mentioned had several people from Medford, uh, West Medford or, or part of their city committees as part of that. Uh, Somerville, um, I think there may have been one person uh, related to Somerville, but it doesn't quite, it does certainly connect into the Mystic River path that goes into sort of Somerville, Medford, but um, the Medford connection, I think, is, is sort of, has been the more important piece of this. Um, let's see, so um, B. Dan Fairchild says, like, Harvard Ave, He's asking about the signal phasing for the two-way bike lane will be separate. Will there be separate phases for bikes just for pedestrians? Or will it happen every cycle where a button or will a button have to be pressed? I don't think we've gotten that detailed into how that would work, but I don't know, Stephanie, if you could sort of generalize on the thought process at the Harvard, uh, Harvard Street, River Street intersection. Overall signal operations, we've not gotten that far. Um, you know, there would definitely be a couple separate sets with this wide crossing of pedestrian push buttons, right side of path and then down by the intersection. But overall signal phasing for this one, we've we've not thought out. Lucy, if you have thoughts on that, we have Lucy, a traffic engineer, um, you know, you're welcome to join in. I think the uh, issue of whether they are activated by a push button or always put on recall in this case, if they are concurrent with the movements is something that we could certainly consider. But um, the bike crossing has real limits as well on whether or not you can have through movements on Mystic Valley turning across the bike lanes. So we may need an exclusive phase for all of those. Having it wider doesn't affect that, the signal timing. So the width of the crosswalk doesn't really affect how much time we need to devote to the pedestrians. Thanks, sorry. But yeah, we've Moving looked at a lot more detail at Summer Street, but not so much here, because it seems much simpler <laughs> in all honesty. All right, so moving along, I'm getting quite a lot of them here. <laughs> Um, so you'd see Jay Phil's asked about the DCR property. Yes, it is DCR property um, in terms of maintenance and whether or not they cut the grass, that's sort of outside of the scope of this, um, but they will need to maintain, you know, the path that is built and, and they, they do. Um, Gina asked another question about the poles, uh, the, the utility poles, can they replace or can they become Barry power lines? I think the answer is Potentially, yes. Um, I don't, I think, I don't know what the cost savings or the cost addition would be for that. Um, I don't know, Stephanie, I don't know if you want to add, but but essentially the, the, the utility poles would need to be moved to make this a, a decent path and again, avoid the accessibility issues that Stephanie mentioned. I think it's, it's fair to add that our you know, our project team proposed that as well. And, you know, so that that is an option on the table, it just needs further consideration. Great. Um, Dan, do you mind if I go yeah. back to some of my questions that have been kind sure. of sitting for a while? <laughs> sure. Um, so there's a I've question. I've got 20 more about, so. Oh, okay, everybody keep directing your questions to Dan, keeps them 
Um, <laughs> I just have a, I have a suggestion. I don't know, Daniel, if it's possible for you to write the answers to some of them while Stephanie answers. If there's some simple ones. Sure. Yeah. I okay, don't know sure. if that's possible. Sorry. I, I can help. write it to everyone. So yeah, I can write it to everyone. Yep. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I've got how will bikers from perpendicular streets along Mystic Valley Parkway access the off-road path? Um, so, oops, whoa, jumping around. Um, you know, it can't be done everywhere. There is a hill here. We cannot get around that. Um, you know, here is a, a flat area, so essentially kind of some of the basic crossing ideas that we proposed here, though we can think them out a little bit more for, for bike, you know, bike exclusive crossing in, in relation to the crosswalk, um, you know, that would kind of work the same in that we want high visibility, uh, crosswalk markings, signage, potentially um, RRFBs, the, the flashing beacons, um, to increase visibility, um, those types of things for those crossings. Um, we took a question on this earlier. These work differently um, and would need a different kind of thought. Um, as for the issue of parking during games on the park on Summer Street, could an accommodation perhaps be worked out with the Fresh Pond Seafood Market? I love that. Um, <laughs> But uh, I don't know, honestly. Dan, any thoughts on that? I'm very sorry. I was looking looking at all my chats. Um, can you say that, say that again? Uh, there is a question about could an accommodation perhaps be worked out with the Fresh Pond Seafood Market for game day parking on Summer Street? That has crossed my mind, actually, as we were talking about it today, because they do have a rather large parking lot area. I think that is something we'd have to explore with them, um, but probably not a guarantee. So I think um, the conversation about the parking on Summer Street is uh, it's something of a, of a question we need to work out. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and make a couple comments that came through the chat. Um, a comment, not a question. I'm a senior who likes to walk along the river and the lake. I love the many benches. This is why I choose to walk uh, or choose this walk. I also appreciate the four parking spots at ALY Brook Parkway um, at the Mystic Valley Parkway. However, the rotaries at High Street and Medford Street are a nightmare to cross. I'm not nimble enough to dash with my walker through the fast moving traffic to get from one walking path to another. So that's one comment. Um, and I will just mention, you know, we didn't show it in our plans, but certainly we'll be keeping a recommendation to keep those benches that are dotted along the path. Um, I think we can skip that one. Um, would the path have lighting? Um, we got a number of comments on this in the original public survey, public meeting. That is to be determined. I do think that where lighting exists today along the lake um, most likely would propose to keep it and along Summer Street. Um, but we've we've heard different ideas on this and I think really we have to have a, a conversation with um, DCR about whether there would actually be lighting within the park space versus on the road where it exists today. I think it, it, it is also along the road, uh, all along the parkway as far as I remember. Um, and some of that I will say gets to the balance of are we um, doing something to harm, you know, animals um, by having more lighting along the path, while others really want, you know, comfortable lighting for evening rides, wintertime rides. So to be determined, um, it is an important topic that we'll address a bit more. A um, couple more comments, and then Dan, I'll send it back to you. Hope you've included Arlington Housing Authority for the Cusick Terrace residence on Summer Street and Monotony Manor near Mystic Valley Parkway. Essential to take into consideration safety concerns for Cusack Terrace and concerns of accessibility for Monotony Manor. It's from Beth. Thank you, Beth. Um, I think, you know, further communication with them, um, 
is something that will will happen going forward. Um, and, oh, this one comes from Dan. I will skip that for now. Lastly, even though the Gulf Station entrance on Summer Street, Mystic Street is one way in, often cars do use it to exit the gas station. It would be safer to close this entrance. Thank you. Good to know. Um, but Dan, I'll, I will send it back to you for the, the questions and, and comments you're getting. Sure, actually, so I went through them and um, there was, um, Sorry, I'm getting some feedback here. Um, there was a, a number of different comments um, related to the Safe Travel Project, just sort of uh, talking about um, some of the issues with that. Um, I'll just, just add in for people's information. Um, this is the Mass Ave Mystic Street that there was concern that pedestrians wouldn't be able to cross the, the you know, cross the entire intersection diagonally. Um, uh, Christopher mentioned, Gina said it was deemed unsafe because of beginner cyclists or children would have a hard time getting through, the, again, the entire intersection. Um, and then and then also about the, you know, the need to ensure that, uh, I guess we didn't, we didn't, didn't increase air pollution because of idling cars and that was sort of a compromise that had to be made. So um, thank you everyone for adding to that. Um, there are several other there were several other comments, um, and I can go through there. But let me let me actually get to the questions, um, and I've answered a couple of them that I could. But um, there is uh, maybe Stephanie, if you can um, speak to this about having an on-street bike lane and a paved path between the rotaries down to the a -Life Brook Greenway. Um, Jay Phils raises a concern about paving so much and taking out a lot of grass along the river. Um, I guess I would just say, you know, there's, we're trying to improve the path that's already there, make it accessible. And as we've talked about uh, previously, we had some, we heard about the need or concerns about faster cyclists on the, path and then providing a space for them on the road. Um, so I don't know if you want to add anything more to that. Just to add that, you know, the, the bike lanes that are proposed would fit in the existing roadway cross section, so no added pavement there, unless in the long term we would kind of build these, these up to a different level. But um, generally that's, you know, existing pavement. Um, and then just back to Dan's point about trying to make an accessible path down in the Parkland space. Um, another thing I would just say to that is we really want to make sure that people of all you know, abilities, ages, um, user types get to have a great experience. And so providing this paved path that goes through trees that, you know, has more of that woodland experience gets away from the road um, was something that we really thought was worth the extra pavement. So, um, and again, there there are um, there is a question specific to this and to the materials in the survey. So you'll be able to say whether you support that or not and, and provide extra comment. Thanks. Um, I'm going to propose two, maybe that okay. we go to John and Kathleen, unless sure. you have a really good clarifying question that might change our understanding. <laughs> I, have, I have two final questions, but okay. um, one needs clarification and the other I think is fairly simple. Um, Stephen just asks about the vehicle level of service at Summer and Mystic with the diagonal crossing. Or maybe Lucy can answer that. Yes, yeah, so this, the existing conditions at this intersection is level of service D, and that's, and I'm looking at the peak hour, I think the AM peak hour, morning peak hour is better, but the worst condition that we looked at was the afternoon peak hour. The existing level is D, as in dog, and it's a scale of A through F. With this change, because we will be giving more time to pedestrians, so a bit less time to vehicles, it goes down to E. And 
that means it's a one letter grade drop. There's like, it's all based on vehicle delay. So it means the delay increases enough to bump it by a threshold. So what that means is it will probably be noticeable, but not extreme because it's one level. It's still very much, E is very much acceptable and very common in urban roadway network. So it will be a, you know, probably a noticeable change, but not extreme. And, you know, it's a, and I think I know there's a question about that on the survey as well, is that a trade-off people would be willing to take for providing that safety. And again, it's really important to provide enough time for people to walk all the way across, even slower walkers. And it's, that's what requires the extra time. Thanks. Okay, yeah, I think, uh, thanks Amber for moving us along. Somebody cooks in the kitchen here. Um, yeah, let's go to John. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I think um, the this what you have on the screen now um, is is, and I'm a you know primarily cyclist, but I think the that turn in front of the police station uh, is is probably the the of all the things I've seen that I, I like. I think that's the one thing I would I would say might be the most problematic for for the town and for traffic. Is is eliminating that that turn from from summer on to Mystic in front of the police station because that the 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 flows of a, a larger sort of like metro flows of traffic not just Arlington but the way in which people circulate through Arlington um, I, I think that that's that's one that that we may have to you know go on the side of the of the automobile. But the, the main thing I wanted to ask about or sort of bring up is if you could go to the, the, the standard uh, cross section um, that shows the, yeah, actually the other one, sorry. Yeah, the, one, the, the larger one with the, the, the broadest one, yeah. So the, no, the cross section, but the cross yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I, I really am concerned about guardrails in terms of both what if you if we switch to a a, a two way bike lane on the on Mystic Valley Parkway as well as as it goes up and I think you've 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 done a good job sort of channeling the traffic on on the the incline on the hill that goes sort of like a, between the lake and the cemetery but when it comes to the sort of standard flow of south side of the river until you get to the rotary and then you switch over to the north side of the river to continue into to uh, Winchester. Um, so that section in Arlington on the south side of the river, uh, I, I, I really worry about about having just a, a sort of raised raised uh, cement or something and, and actually having a guardrail of some sort. And then later, um, when you see it in plan, it looks like you've you've just treated it with with like uh, you know pavement marking. Um, it's sort of like it kind of looks like a like a wing um, in a few different areas. Yes, exactly that. Right. So so th this 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 here in plan is is um, is probably where I'm most like talking about. And I think there's a good example of what could be done. Um, kind of behind the center of town where the, if you're going, um, if you're on the Minuteman bikeway and you're, you're from the intersection we were talking about earlier and you're headed out toward Lexington or you're headed into town, there is a guardrail between like the parking and the, the, and the path. And, uh, and there are a few openings in that guardrail. I think the guardrail might actually just be out of, of wood as well, but there's a few openings that could kind of line up with some of the discussion that people have brought up about access points, but I would really want to see a guardrail. Um, and it could be, again, aesthetically pleasing of some sort, because this is not supposed to have commercial traffic anyway. But, um, but I think that, that having a guardrail of some sort, if we have two-way traffic, because if I'm flying on, a, on the road, I'm fine with with traffic the same way, but when I'm going contra flow to the traffic it, with also bikes coming the same way, I yeah. would I would feel much safer with with some sort of like hard uh, guardrail in between. 
Thank you. Yeah, I would I would say in general, we've heard a few different comments on what is the level of vertical separation from that lane. So we're going to definitely be giving that more thought and be talking to the stakeholders about it. Kathleen. Hi, uh, Kathy's husband, actually. Uh, can we bring up the summer and mystic intersection, please? Uh, so we're parents of two young kids. Uh, we have gone through Arlington Center with a six-year-old on her own bike uh, with a two-phase crossing. I vastly prefer the configuration on screen. Uh, the, the Arlington Center, it worked within the design constraints of the grant and the funding available. It, single phase is the way to go if you're going to be supporting you know, all, all abilities, all ages. You can't have kids queuing up in the middle of the street. Um, uh, regarding the Harvard Ave uh, intersection with the mega crosswalk there, I'm really afraid that's just going to be full of cars uh, at a red light. They're just they're just going to pile up there. They don't they're not going to obey that stop line 50 feet back from the corner. Uh, and then uh, finally, regarding uh, Kimball Road and Davis, uh, you, you said they were not well planned out, but I want to put a buck in your ear about this. Uh, we already have cars coming down Kimball Road uh, trying to use that goat path of a connection to get on Mystic Valley Parkway. Uh, and they're doing that because on Google Maps, it looks kind of like the road continues. So it would be helpful in some future configuration if it did not look like the path continued straight down uh, into Mystic Valley Parkway. Just and we there should also be consideration given to preventing cars from trying to just uh, drive over the the bike path because that already happens in town at other intersections. All right, um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, those are those are great points that can kind of turn into recommendations for implementation. Stephen. Hi, thank you. Um, just uh, if you could pull up the Summer and Mystic Street intersection, uh, just respond to the comment about the slip turn lane. I'm not sure what the technical term is, um, but as Dan is probably aware, there's you know existing the same kind of condition at the intersection of Route 660 and Mystic Street, and it's extremely dangerous, um, and it really needs to be reconfigured. And I think a lot of that happens here as well, having that separate turn lane that cars don't look for pedestrians. I live very close to here and walk across that intersection all the time. That turn, that slip turn lane um, just feels extremely dangerous in the existing configuration. So I think this is a great improvement from just pedestrian safety perspective. Thank you, Lynette. And just wanna note, cause you know, we're gonna be kind of wrapping up in, in nine minutes that anybody we don't get to in the chat, please know that we're, we're seeing your comments and saving out these chats. Um, go ahead, Lynette. Yeah, I'm a walker and a runner all year round several times a week down um, along the path next to Lower Mystic Lake. And, and I'm every time I go down there, I'm absolutely shocked that the, the guardrail is next to the lake protecting cars from going into the lake. But meanwhile, the pedestrians walking through the, along the, the path would get plowed down by the cars. But the guardrail isn't actually there to protect pedestrians, it's there to protect um, cars. So I would like to urge that that guardrail gets moved so it's protecting pedestrians. Thank you. Not uh, <laughs> I have one more question, but then there was a previous one that I didn't quite understand uh, since I don't see anybody else raised hands. We can see if we can try to get that clarified. Um, if that's all right. That is fine. I've got a few more, I think, just comments in my chat as well, and maybe another question. Um, but go ahead, Dan. Uh, so this is from Gina S. and I, I don't quite understand, excuse me, I don't quite understand this is about the rotary crosswalk back for safety re nose in, but what about cars zipping out of the rotary in the safety of pedestrians? Gina, do you want to clarify that? Sure. Um, 
the the term nose in was 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 presented as a reason why the crosswalk was was pushed back but that's for cars entering the the rotary then there are the cars that are exiting the rotary and that's where it's even more dangerous that's why most of us cross in the middle of the bridge so that the cars that zip around and go out of the rotary have some time to stop before slamming into us, the pedestrians. I can offer a little um, thoughts on that. This is a you know illustrative concept, but one of the key things that the way these roundabouts will operate will be very different than they do today, because there's actually a much narrower vehicle path. Right now, the that brown area doesn't really exist. It's all pavement and cars can go through straight through at much higher speeds than this will allow. So the whole operation of the vehicle all the way through will be much slower. And then the idea also is that the um, vehicle approaching the stop bar will be out of the way of the rotary roundabout circulating traffic when it stops for the pedestrian. And generally, if they're well designed to keep that speed really low, which is really the key thing, uh, cars have very good yielding behavior. It's correct that probably entering the roundabout is even a little better than exiting the roundabout, but it's really all about keeping the speed low. The visibility is good because you have a good line of sight. So. Thank you. Thanks, Gina. Thanks. Um, I have, okay, a question and then a comment. So we'll, this may be the last question. So for Mary, uh, let's see, for the roundabouts, we'll stay on the roundabouts. How do you envision cyclists navigating with the new design? Is the concept for cyclists to use the crosswalks or merge with traffic and take the appropriate exit as is done now? And the, the answer is both can be possible and more confident riders that are more comfortable in traffic and riding at a higher speed would will often choose to ride in the travel lane and just take a full lane and ride through but there is gonna be a accessible route that's accessible to bicycles for the less confident riders um, to go all the way around and they would use the crosswalks. So it'd be kind of a shared crosswalk with bikes and walkers. Thank you. Uh, and I guess I'll just read the comment I have from Mark about if the major intersection crossing could be triggered with buttons, just like lakes, whoa. I just sent a very long comment. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so that the crossings could be triggered with buttons like the Lake Street crossing that would greatly improve traffic flow and compensate for reduced lanes, especially during rush hour. So, and then I have a very long comment from Emily, which I will not read, but we will record it. Um, I think I have one more question here, um, or maybe two. Why was the convergence of bikeway at Summer Street at Food Link 108 Summer Street never considered as an access point from the bikeway in this plan? I I don't know. I, yeah. I know where that is. I know where they're talking about. Um, that was not all I can say is that was not considered because it's not the fastest route to getting from it's actually west on this on their plan farther west mm -hmm. um by you know 500 feet or a thousand feet or something um so yeah that was um simply not the the fastest route really actually getting to the bikeway probably through buzzle field is the fastest route but mill street is the next you know sort of the next best and i think that um in my opinion i don't know why you'd go to summer street if you didn't or go to the summer street near food link access point if you didn't have to um so it makes sense to go to mill street uh the summer street access point is also having to cross there kind of mid block um i think would be less comfortable or more difficult um than trying to cross at the the intersections that we already have um so i've got a last question here um, and there were a couple other comments. I appreciate them and we are noting those. Um, is the vision that bikes won't be able to use the parkway on Lower Mystic Lake 
from Route 3 to Route 60. You can bike much faster on this section than you than would be appropriate for a shared use path. You can certainly bike in the roadway. So they're talking about the constrained section. You know, nobody's going to prevent a cyclist from doing that. We are not providing specific infrastructure for that. We thought about it. We did try to plan it out. The roadway widths just really don't make that possible. It becomes particularly complicated to get up and down this hill and how that would work because um, you just can't provide for both directions. Um, so you're either riding in the roadway, which a confident cyclist might be able to do. Also, I will say we're narrowing the roadway, so it, it will help slow traffic down. I know that's very intimidating now because it's just a wide open sea of pavement, um, but we'll be narrowing it considerably. Um, and then you will have the path to the side for more casual users. Those were the last of the questions that I had. Were there any other questions from, from yours, Dan? Um, I think a question that um, sort of, sort of a question, indirect question. Um, it was about the slip lane at Mystic and Summer Street. Uh, maybe this is a question for Lucy. Do you know? I, I think there was data collection taken there. Was it able to capture those right turns from the slip lane from Summer onto Mystic? Oh, definitely. And we have okay. a count of all movements, including the slip lane. Great. And we're you know, and all that traffic's included in our analysis of the design. And, you know, there will still be a right turn lane. It's just not going to, the right in, turning traffic will be at a lower speed, which actually will be a safer situation than what exists today. And that will be in the existing conditions memo that we referenced earlier, right? Yes, okay. yes, yeah. that yeah. should be released the in the next. traffic counts are all in there, yeah. right? So people next can dig into days, that data. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. We've hit our meeting time. I really want to thank everybody. These were great questions and some great comments. Again, if, if we didn't say yours, we are noting them in the chat. I just re-entered the uh, link to the survey. Please take the survey um, and you, you will be able to comment there as well on all of these different components. Any, any final words, Dan or Amber? We'll be releasing the survey tomorrow or the next day. Uh, and it'll be open for next two weeks. Um, I want to echo, Stephanie, uh, what you said. Really appreciate these are great comments and questions. Um, and definitely fill out the survey and share it with everyone. We want to get a lot of feedback so that we can uh, move forward and have a really robust study uh, to continue on and make this project a reality. Amber, anything you want to say? No, I think. I think you covered it and you know there's a lot of um, considerations we're trying to balance here with environmental concerns and access and it's tricky and we're doing what we can to try to take all the input into account. Well, thanks everyone for your time. Have a good evening. The remainder of it. <laughs> yeah, go to bed. No. Have bye -bye. A good night. Thank you everyone.